Hello, my name is Martin and this is 3D Printing Iceland. In this video I'm going to show you the design process I went through making a Raspberry camera mount that goes on the x-axis on the Prusa printers and I went through the process of designing a part to mount the camera and also to hold the cable in place. Let's have a look after the intro. Let me first state this design is not my original idea as such. It's based on a design by a user on Thingiverse called Moon Doggy. I will have a link to that design on the video description. And I started out initially using that design and I found that it was based on having very many links from the X motor to the camera itself. And after a while the links started to move and droop and the camera was going down slowly. And I wanted to make a design that was more rigid and also lightweight and there were several ideas I had in mind but this design like I said is initially based on a design I found on Thingiverse and I want to give credit to the maker there but let's have a look at the mount itself and we'll go through the process in Fusion 360. So there are several pieces in this design. Firstly there is a mount that goes on the x-axis motor that is a straight piece here that will hold the cable and has a ball joint at the end and there's a, a three ball joints and the two in the middle have a cable management clip on it and the last one is, is the one that goes into the camera mount itself and then at the end there is a camera mount piece and that is a two-piece part there's a lid that snaps in and then the case for the camera and the camera is, is mounted uh, on four packs that go through the PCB. It's quite snug fit but there are four holes on the PCB and the mount piece has four packs that the PCB lays in and it's a snug fit so it will just hold itself down but on the back side of the plate is a pin here in the middle that pushes on the PCB so everything is held in place once this snaps in and this is just a, a tight fit that snaps into the part is held in place just by tight tolerances of the pieces so that's uh, the way I designed this and this part is is very thin and is absolutely bare minimal plastic uses to hold the Raspberry camera and the hole is uh, big enough so you can use the tool to adjust the focus on the Raspberry cam but the links snap in to each other and what I've found out I have to uh, print this in uh, a material that has a little bit flex to it is like a minimal material usage on the pieces and if I'm not careful uh, this can easily break but those snap in together and have uh, not so much resistant and my plan made the camera in the correct position to put a little bit of super glue on the joint to keep it in place when I've uh, adjusted it to the correct position so from the, the joints the cable goes inside this part here and this uh, is a two-piece part it's split in the middle here and, and this one is screwed with a 20 millimeter long m3 nut i'm just going to remove it and, and show you how the piece is designed and the, the bolt just goes into a hole in the motor that is not used so it's an easy placement so this is a two-piece part and you have to be careful when you take the cable out to don't damage the connectors this piece in the back is made in a way that it will go past the cable for the X axis motor so it is a good fit here and this mounts just like this on front of it and the bolt goes through and it both has the slot for the cable it's a thin wall here the, to cover the cable and i didn't want to have the cable hanging down underneath and i decided to have it integrated into the design so this will go here, go here and the cable comes the back of the energy board cover and this design is a snap in design that goes between the vent holes and just goes between and, and snaps on the back side with a small knob there is a little bit of extra cable that i tug away underneath the design so this cable is is 24 inches here's the extender thingy as it's called and this will connect the cable from the, the Raspberry Zero to the camera itself and this is designed in a way so the extender thingy will snap into two knobs and it's held in place by that and then in the end the cable goes in its end 
Um, this piece is, is designed to, to fit between the, the grids on the back plate. And this plate here is a removable plate from the engine board case that is recommended to print when you install the Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, and we decided to have it uh, in a way that it will just snap in. And this cable here is coming from the Raspberry. Um, on the Raspberry Pi Zero, the cable connector is on a smaller version than the cable that is on a normal Raspberry Pi. And you have to have a cable that has the small connector. So far, at least, the cable that goes into the Raspberry Pi Zero is not available in a greater length than or 50 centimeters long. So this cable is, is with a smaller connector on this end and normal Raspberry camera uh, cable connector on this end. And therefore you need the extender thingy that this cable is connected to. And this cable here is, is 24 inches that goes to the camera. Now I want to show you the design of each piece and I'll switch over to Fusion 360. So this is the first part of the models I want to show you. And this is the housing for the Raspberry camera. And it's a two part piece. And the first piece is like this and um, the initial sketch holds pretty much every aspect of the piece except the top part and the extrusion that goes at the end. I want to show you the, the sketch that everything is based on. So this is the initial sketch and I extrude the bottom part and the walls of the mount. Then the pegs for the, the PCB of the Raspberry camera put in place and then the exterior walls that will cover the PCB and I cut out a piece here for the cable and I reduced the, the material used on the walls in the inside. They didn't have to be as thick as I initially designed them. Here I put in the place where the links will connect to the camera housing and this hole is designed in a way that even though that you get a little bit of looping while printing there's a more tolerances on the upper part than the side part and have it easily printed out without support. It will just be a bridge here. The height is a little bit more than the width of the piece and so if you have a little bit of drooping it won't hurt. Uh, then I rounded off some of the corners and made the design a little bit more smooth. Then I designed the lid. The sketch for the lid is projected from the original sketch so the placement of the pegs is in the exact same spot as the, the bottom piece. And then I inserted pegs to align with the pegs on the base board and this piece here in the middle presses against the PCB in a place where there are no components just to make sure the camera won't rattle inside the housing. So here's the final design. You can see the pegs line up and this peg is pressing against the PCB in the correct way. And this hole here is just big enough so you can easily adjust the focus of the camera with a focus adjustment tool that you can buy from Adafruit. The next piece I designed was the arm for the links and I didn't want to have links going through from the motor all the way because I wanted it to be more sturdy than the original design that has had links all the way. So this is a, a piece that goes on the X motor is bolted here, it has the slot here for the Raspberry camera cable. This is more complicated design but I'll go through the process. So first I made the initial sketch to get the general shape things and um, here's uh, the design of the cable guide. I spent quite a amount of time adjusting this part to get the cable to fit. This was built up and here's a ball joint top. I made some fillets and, and initially I did have this big cover to cover the cable but I later changed the design so there's a smaller footprint of the cable guide. Here is the original design but this uh, was the final design to have it like this and there's just uh, enough place for the ripper cable to be inside this slot and I made the second part that goes in the opposite direction that was also initially with a bigger cable guide but pinched that out so after trying out several things it came out like this so this is a, a two-part print on the bottom side and the upper part for the links. Uh, there are three types of link. This one goes into the camera housing and this is the first link. And this link here has a cable management attached to it. So the ribbon cable can slot underneath and be guided by this piece. And it will have a small piece here that the cable won't run out. So initially I, I decided to make this link as light as possible and I found out that as it's pretty thin normal PLA was too brittle to handle this and so this links should be printed in a more 
flexible material that like ABS or some material that can flex a little bit without breaking and uh, I've broken several pieces during the testing just because those links are, are pretty weak but I want to have them as light as possible and just use a stronger material and design for that but this as most things start with a sketch I tried several angles for each piece but it's basically a revolve of one piece and a pattern and I was trying out having four pieces that were smaller and different types but I found out that three were just a good place and here's another revolve just to close up the top of it then I rounded off those edges in the inside and I added this middle piece and another revolve from the sketch to make it in a size that would fit inside the ball then as I had this design I copied that over and, and made the thesis to have this with a square peg that will go into the camera mount and then I made another copy that had the cable guide finally I added the, the knots here that will stop the cable and I had, had the links they came out great and I have to try different materials but I'll probably print this out in either SG or ABS because I found the PLA parts to be uh, too brittle and they break off here then the final piece is the cover for the extender thingy and the cables and this is a very small a simple design and I started out with the sketch this is the place for the pegs to hold the PCB and this is the end pieces that are extruded and bottom piece and here I made the knots that will grip into the back side of the grid on the electronic cover and I made the holes for the ribbon cables and the packs for the PCB uh, I made a small chamfer here just because this was an overhang and I didn't want it to be a problem during printing and didn't want to use supports so I added a small chamfer here but this piece is a very simple little design this is a two-piece part this is a two-piece part I have three different pieces and this piece uh, is basically to my last weekend prototyping and printing out and I will show you on the table I have a lot of pieces that I printed out during the design process and it's always fun to prototype and I found to be a good use of having two printers printing several pieces be between design changes so let's have a look at those pieces so here for the camera housing there are several pieces this was the first piece when I was just fitting the the packs for the PCB in the correct place and made some changes on the tolerances of the packs to make them uh, just so the PCB will snap in and then I was designing the housing itself and there were several test prints on placing the camera hole in the correct place and in the correct size and there were several tries of printing just to get that right and then the final design has the corners rounded and with a hole for the peg from the bolt joint. So that was the last piece designed this part here and smoothing everything over so it will be a nice looking print. So that was uh, took some testing to do. The next piece I did was this part and I was testing out several types of the cable management and first had this one and decided to trim it down at this piece in the end and there are several pieces I printed out trying out and testing out the strength and <laughs> just breaking it and like my usual testing I print something out and see where it breaks and, and see if I need to add some strength to it decided finally on this design this is a pretty strong shape and it's a sturdy piece and for the ball joints I, I tried out different types of, of filament and I have thrown most of them away because I broke them <laughs> but I found out that uh, PLA was normally too brittle and it broke too easily I have to find a better material maybe ABS or, or patchy for those links and you want to have them strong because you're moving them and if you're snapping them out when you're maintaining the printer you want those pieces to be strong so uh, there was several links printed out and end up usually breaking them <laughs> but those were just PLA parts and then finally the part that holds the extender thingy this was the first try where I just was getting the correct fit on the back side of the NC port cover and printed out several pieces deciding on thickness and, and how stiff I would have it and this was the, the final design and I have the cable going through the back side and this is rather thin so it flexes a little bit and this one is uh, printed out in call of a PLA slash PHA filament and it has a little bit more flex to it than the normal PLA this was working well for this piece this 
part here is also printed that in that filament. The camera housing was just working fine with a normal PLA and, and this is also call of up filament. Um, uh, but I have to find a better filament for those links as the PLA is a little bit too brittle and it is giving me trouble when I was removing or putting them on sometimes they would snap so that's something I do find out so as you can see on the table there's a lot of prints and I've thrown away a lot more than is on the table and those are just test prints while I was designing and I love to design a thing like this and, and print out and, and make changes and find out what works and what does not work and it's a great process using Fusion 360. Like I said in the beginning the, the initial design is, is based on a design I found on Thingiverse and I want to give credit to that designer as the, the idea of mounting it on the x cards uh, using links and brackets like this is, is not my original idea. For now uh, this will be this video on, on my design process of making this camera mounts and I'll do a separate video on installing everything but uh, for now I thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.